activated masks for personal pathogenic protection. There are a lot of masks in the market. If you have none available to you, you can make your own. There are many tutorials on YouTube that guide you through the process. The point of this video is to talk about a potential way that you can make your mask activated rather than just passive and that may enable it to be reusable and to give you better protection than would be offered by a standard mask. The rationale behind this is that masks can reduce the exposure to high initial viral loads, giving more time for the body to prepare immune response. That is to say that if you get a little bit of virus uh, through the mask, it's not going to necessarily make you ill very quickly, but it does kind of gear your body up for fighting the infection. However, if you don't have a mask, then you're going to get a big hit potentially from someone and then you have much less time in your immune system to uh, get ready uh, to deal with it. Right now, there is a worldwide shortage of masks. These masks typically only have single use. So even if you do get one, uh, you might be finding yourself forced to reuse it. Now, salt has been used for thousands of years to preserve food, and the method described here for its uh, application to masks is non-toxic to humans. Research in 2017 published in Nature shows effective killing of various flu virus in 5 to 30 minutes from exposure. So the important factors when considering mask is that it must seal to the face, and one thing that people sometimes forget when they're making their own masks is the bridge and often you can use a piece of wire and sew that in there and this helps prevent air being drawn in around the bridge of the nose. The mask must be dense enough to catch pathogen bearing particles but allow sufficient air to pass through in order to allow easy breathing. The table salt coat that we are discussing in this video should be at minimum on the exterior surface and enough to ensure interaction with incident virus bearing droplets. How does it work? Well, virus particles shed from infectious persons can become airborne, this is what we call aerosolized, uh, as minute water containing droplets during the process of coughing, sneezing, talking, breathing, etc. So as air is drawn to the surface of a treated mask during breathing, the droplets are caught on the salty surface. The droplets containing the virus then dissolve some of the salt into them. Then as the water in the salt and virus containing water evaporates, the recrystallizing salt breaks up the virus particles, so deactivating them. So the technique to produce a mask would be this. You produce a saturated sodium chloride, that's common table salt solution, with water. To do this, you can take warm water in a plastic container. You then add salt until you see that additional salt does not easily dissolve. Then immerse the mask in the solution, or you could possibly use like a garden spray, you know, the type that you might use to spray your house plants or something, and, and spray the mask. And you obviously must think about the fact that it needs to completely coat the surface of the mask, but still allow breathing. So maybe some trial and error would be involved. Then obviously you must dry mask before use because of course the way this works is that you have this salt on the fibres of the mask and the droplet containing the virus must go on to the salt, absorb the salt, and so that wouldn't be so effective if the mask was not dry. Advantages of activated masks are it should reduce the chances of infection or large initial exposure. It should allow reuse. And salt kills rather than just captures the virus. The references for this uh, are Business Insider, where it specifically says, could uh, this particular technique neutralize coronavirus? And the article that was published in uh, January 2017 in Nature is quoted here. From microscopic analysis, aerosol drying time was about three minutes, indicating that destruction of virus observed at five minutes is associated with drying-induced salt crystallization. And you can see here there is an uh, image taken from that publication. And it says, mask with salt-coated filter for prevention and deactivation of airborne pathogens. 
and it's from Universal and Reusable Virus Deactivation Systems for Respiratory Protection. Thank you for listening, and I hope that this may help you. My name's Bob Greenier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. This is a community interest project that is set up to look into the processes of low energy nuclear reactions to solve the energy problem and nuclear waste remediation.